Hey guys, Easter is right around the corner, and today I'm gonna to share with you one of my favorite springtime menus that's perfect for an Easter lunch. And the best part is, most of it can be made the day before. My kind of party. We're gonna kick things off with an easy appetizer of creamy goat cheese rolled in fresh herbs. Then it's a delicious sweet pea soup topped with sour cream and lemon zest. For our main course, I'll show you how to make my slow roasted lamb with mint pesto, served alongside crispy roasted potatoes and spiced fruit. And for dessert, it's mini lemon meringue tartlets with a thyme scented crust. If you like the looks of this menu, you can now subscribe to my own channel, Entertaining with Beth, where each week I'll share with you easy recipes elegant enough for entertaining, but simple enough for a weeknight meal. Now when it comes to holiday entertaining, my philosophy is keep it simple. Because in addition to the big meal that you're putting together, you also have a lot going on in the background. And Easter is no exception. Between the relatives arriving with fresh flowers, the egg hunts that are going on in the background, one year my brother even showed up in a bunny outfit, so I had a 10-foot bunny to deal with. So the secret is to keep things simple so that when all these theatrics are going on in the background, you're gonna keep your cool. And I can't think of a better appetizer than my herbed goat cheese log. You just set it and forget get it and you never have to think about it again. I almost have to laugh because it's so easy it's barely even a recipe. It's really more of an idea. And all you do is take some fresh cut herbs and in the springtime my favorite herbs to use are dill, parsley, and chives. You're going to give them all a good chop, mix them up together on a cutting board, then take a log of fresh goat cheese, roll the goat cheese into the herbs, set it on a platter, and that's all you have to do. Wasn't that easy? And the thing that I love about it is it's fresh, it's delicious, there's a taste of spring in every little bite, and you can just set that platter down and not even have to worry about it while all the fun of the holidays is going on. When it comes to an Easter menu, I always like to incorporate flavors that scream spring. And for me, that's a sweet pea. I love a sweet pea soup, especially this recipe, because there is a secret ingredient in it that will make it creamy and smooth without the use of any heavy cream. What you're gonna do first is in a large stock pot, you're gonna saute up some white onion and some shallots, just until the vegetables are translucent and begin to become fragrant. Then you're gonna add some chopped garlic. You just wanna let that cook for about a minute. You don't wanna take it any farther than that because there's nothing worse than the taste of burnt garlic. Then we're gonna add some vegetable stock. Now comes the secret ingredient, one russet potato. The potato has a lot of starch in it, and as it cooks, it's going to release that starch into your soup. That is what's gonna make this creamy and delicious without the help of any heavy cream. I use potatoes in lots of the soups that I make because it's so much healthier and better than having to turn to the heavy cream to make it creamy. Now here comes the easy part one bag of frozen peas. So you don't need to spend the time shelling peas, although you could if you really wanted to, it probably would be delicious that way. But frozen peas work just as well. You're gonna use the whole bag. Then go ahead and put the lid on it and let your soup simmer for about 10 minutes. You're really just looking for the potatoes to become fork tender. Then you're gonna take your soup and transfer it to a blender and puree it in batches. I really recommend doing it in batches because that way your blender will work a lot harder making that soup fine and pureed than if it's totally full. In between your batches, you can transfer your soup to a large Pyrex bowl just until you've got it all done. Then you're gonna take your soup and transfer it back to your cleaned out pot and then test it for seasoning. At this point, you may just want to add a little salt or pepper, but you will find this soup is so flavorful between the onions and the garlic and the peas that you really don't need to do much to it. You're then gonna ladle it out into soup bowls, top it with a dollop of sour cream, and then finish it with a little fresh lemon zest. And there you have it, an elegant, beautiful first course that screams of spring, it's delicious and hearty and creamy, and just a great way to kick off your springtime menu. I like the energy. So as far back as I can remember, our family has always had lamb for Easter. We've had a few years where we've deviated to ham and no one's ever liked it and we've always gone back to the lamb. And when it comes to perfecting the perfect roast lamb, I gotta give credit to my dad. He has got this marinade that for years has been top secret until recently I whittled it out of him. It is everything but the kitchen sink and just makes your lamb so tender, so delicious, and everybody begs for it every year. So here's what you do to put it together. You're first gonna start with a boneless leg of lamb. 
you really want to ask your butcher to also butterfly it for you. That way you won't have to wrestle with it when you get home. To put the marinade together, you're going to start with a large Pyrex dish. To that, you're going to add a cup of pomegranate juice. This is kind of the secret part of the recipe. If you can't find pomegranate juice, you also could use cherry juice. You're just looking for a sweet juice that's also a little bit tart at the same time. Then you're going to add some garlic, some ginger, some soy sauce. Now there is quite a lot of soy sauce in this, so I do recommend using the low sodium soy sauce. It does still have a lot of salt in it, so what it's gonna do is just tenderize and flavor that lamb as it sits. Then you're gonna add some peanut oil. And when you get to your market, you're gonna see two different types of peanut oil. You're gonna see refined and unrefined. You wanna get the unrefined. That's the peanut oil with all the flavor in it. The refined doesn't have any flavor in it, and that's really used for frying. Then for a little sweetness, we're gonna add some apricot jam, and some honey. You're gonna whisk that all up and you'll see you'll start to have a beautiful marinade. Take your lamb, place it in the marinade, cover it on both sides, then cover your dish and pop it in the fridge. You really wanna let this lamb marinate overnight because that is only gonna make that piece of meat all the more tender and delicious when you go to roast it the next day. Now on to the second part of this recipe, the mint pesto. So this time of year, every time when Easter rolls around, the mint in my garden is at its peak. So I always love to incorporate some sort of mint flavor in my Easter menus. And I can't think of a better way than with mint pesto, especially when you're making lamb. And it's super simple to put together. Here's what you do. You're gonna take about three cups of mint, a clove of garlic, and some pine nuts. Whirl that all up in a food processor just until it's finely minced. Then you're slowly gonna add your olive oil, keeping the machine running just until you get a nice paste. Then you're just gonna add some salt and pepper, and that's it, your pesto is done. Then once your lamb has been marinating overnight, you're gonna take it out of the marinade and blot it dry. You really wanna blot it dry just so that when you go to roast the lamb, it doesn't steam up and become kind of a soggy mess. You wanna get rid of any excess liquid. Place the lamb fat side down on a cutting board, and then take your mint pesto and spread it all over the lamb. You're then gonna fold the meat in half, just like a book, and then tie it up with some butcher's twine. If you've never tied up a roast, it's really easy to do. All you do is take the butcher's twine, put it around the meat and tie it in a knot. Then you're gonna take your string, you're gonna go over the meat and under it, and then create a loop. and then just continue doing the same thing all the way down the piece of meat. Over, under, through the loop, over, under, through the loop. And then once you get to the very end, tie it off in a knot, and that's it, your roast is ready. What this is going to do is help your meat stay together while it cooks. It also is going to ensure that your meat cooks at the same temperature and actually roasts evenly. Then you're gonna take some Yukon Gold potatoes. I love the Yukon Golds because they're really creamy inside and they look beautiful with the lamb. Just give them a good toss with some olive oil, season with salt and pepper, and then place them all over the lamb just along either side. Roasting the meat with the potatoes is going to infuse those potatoes with the most delicious juices coming from the lamb. It also makes it really easy because you can cook the roast and the potatoes at the same time. Now when it comes to choosing the potatoes, I do like to use the ones that are on the small side. Because remember, you're gonna be roasting these potatoes with the lamb, and the smaller they are, the better the chance you will have that they will be done at the same time your lamb is done. And then the final step is to insert a meat thermometer. I can't say enough about the meat thermometer. It's really the only way to know when that lamb is perfectly cooked. So for me, I really think lamb is best cooked medium, which is about 155 degrees is when you wanna pull it out. It will come up to temperature as it rests to about 160, which is really the ideal temperature for lamb. The other thing to know about cooking lamb is that it likes to be cooked at a low temperature. So just remember this motto, low and slow is the way to go, and you will not go wrong when cooking lamb. When your lamb has reached 155 degrees, go ahead and pull it out, transfer it to a cutting board, and cover it with some foil. At this point, check the doneness of your potatoes. They should be fork tender. If they're not, go ahead and pop them in the oven to roast for about another 10 minutes or so. You do wanna allow your lamb to rest for at least 10 minutes. That way, you'll assure that you will have a nice, juicy piece of meat when you go to cut into it. If you try to cut into it straight away, what's gonna happen is all those juices are gonna escape and you're gonna end up with a dried piece of meat. So definitely be patient. Go ahead and place your lamb on a large platter 
and then I like to nestle in the potatoes on either side, and then garnish the whole thing with some fresh mint. And there you have it, a beautiful meal that is worthy of an elegant occasion like Easter Sunday lunch. Now the only thing more desired at Easter at our house, aside from dad's lamb, is his spiced fruit. Now I know that might sound like a strange combination, but let me tell you, it is the perfect complement to this lamb recipe, and it couldn't be easier to put together. All you do is you're gonna add one jar of peaches with a little bit of the syrup, one jar of pears with a little of its syrup, and one can of apricots. You're then gonna dust a little bit of curry powder on top, and that is it. You are going to roast that at 325 for about 10 minutes. Now I have to admit, I'm typically the type of person that believes fresh is best when it comes to fruits and vegetables. But at this time of year, when peaches are not in season and apricots are just beginning, the canned variety is really the way to go. They're also softer and they don't take as long to cook because you really only want them to roast for about 10 minutes. So it works out perfectly using the canned or jarred varieties. And then the final step is just to add some cinnamon sticks. The cinnamon sticks not only make it pretty, but the heat of the fruit infuses into the cinnamon stick and releases all of that beautiful cinnamon flavor. So for a side dish that may look like a dessert, trust me, it is so delicious with the lamb because you've got that sweet and savory combo that really complements each other and it takes minutes to put together and it looks so pretty too. Now when it comes to holiday desserts, I always like to do something a little bit fancy, and I can't think of a better idea than a lemon meringue pie for Easter. But the trouble with lemon meringue pies is that you spend all this time making them beautiful, and then by the time you cut the last piece, it's kind of a mess. So instead, I like to put together little lemon meringue tartlets, that way each guest gets a beautiful pie and they can cut into it themselves. So we are first going to create our crust. Now when it comes to pies that need to be refrigerated, like a lemon meringue pie or a chocolate mousse pie or anything that has custard in it, I really like to use a crust that's really more like a cookie than an actual pie dough. And the reason being is when you refrigerate it, especially overnight, it's going to retain the crispness and not get all soggy on you. So this is a great recipe for that. So we're going to cream some butter in an electric mixer. Then we're gonna add some sugar. Beat that up just until it's nice and fluffy, about five to seven minutes. Then we're gonna add two eggs, some vanilla, and some lemon zest. Give that a good beat just until everything is all combined. Now here's where I break with tradition. I like to add two tablespoons of fresh thyme. I love to add herbs in desserts, especially springtime desserts, because it adds a really nice savory touch to something that's very sweet like lemon meringue. It also looks beautiful when your crust is baked up and you see those little specks of fresh thyme. Then in a separate bowl, we're gonna whisk together some flour, some salt, and just a little bit of baking powder. You're going to add your flour mixture to your butter mixture and just mix that up until everything is well combined. You're then gonna turn your dough out into two mounds and wrap them in wax paper. The dough really needs to set up in the refrigerator for at least an hour. This is important because otherwise, if you go ahead and put the dough that's too warm in your little tart tins, it's not going to retain its shape as it bakes. So definitely give it a good hour just to firm up. Then when your dough is ready, you're going to roll it out and then here comes the easy part. You don't even need to make it perfect. In fact, I will just take little patches of dough and press it into my tartlet pans. When it comes to tartlet pans, I really love the kind that come with the removable bottom. It's just gonna make releasing your tart so much easier after it's baked. Once your dough is fitted into all your tins, you're then gonna go in with a fork and just pierce the dough. Transfer your pans onto a rimmed line cookie sheet and then pop in the oven at 350 for about five to seven minutes. You're just looking for them to become slightly golden brown. Then go ahead and remove them from the oven and allow them to cool and then you can get on with making the filling. So the filling is really easy to put together. All you do is take some water and some sugar, bring that to a simmer, you're just looking for the sugar to dissolve and there aren't any more crystals left in it. Meanwhile, you're going to combine six egg yolks, some cornstarch, and a little bit of salt. Give that a good whisk until combined, and then you are slowly gonna take your sugar water and pour it into the egg mixture, whisking all the while. Be careful because you don't wanna scramble the eggs, so do it slowly. 
Once that's all combined, you're gonna take the egg mixture, put it back in the saucepan, and then let it simmer. As it's cooking, you're going to go in with your whisk and just keep stirring it. You wanna make sure that you keep an eye on it because it can burn and turn thick pretty quickly. So just go ahead and keep whisking it until it gets nice and thick. Once it's reached the desired thickness, and at this point, it's really kind of personal preference. I like it to reach the consistency of like a nice pudding. Then you're gonna add some butter and about a third of a cup of fresh lemon juice. Once your tartlets are cooled, you're gonna remove them from their tins, and then I like to put them on a cooling rack fitted onto another cookie sheet. You'll see why in a minute when we actually go to make the meringue. You're then gonna transfer your filling into your shells. It doesn't even need to be fully cooled. Lukewarm is fine. And then you're gonna get on making the meringue. In the bowl of an electric mixer, you're gonna to put together some egg whites, some salt, and some cream of tartar. Now, if you can't find cream of tartar, you could leave it out. It just may take a little bit longer for your egg whites to reach stiff peaks. But if you can find it, you'll end up looking for it in the spice aisle of your grocery store. And it's worth using because you're gonna end up with shinier, glossier egg whites that will beat up a lot faster. Once your egg whites reach a kind of foamy stage, you're slowly gonna start to add your sugar. You wanna add it slowly so that you don't deflate your egg whites. Continue to beat them until they reach really nice stiff peaks, and then you're gonna add the vanilla. And that's it, your meringue is done. You're gonna transfer your meringue to a pastry bag fitted with a pastry tip. Now, here's the fun part. You really can choose any type of tip you like. I like the round ones because I like to make little dollops, but you could do a star tip. Really, it's up to you. That's the fun thing with meringue. It does make some pretty designs. I like to do little dollops all around the side of the tartlet, generally around the same size and then one big dollop in the center. And you'll see you will have one beautiful looking little tartlet. And because of our pre-planning, we are all ready to go because our tarts are laid out on our rack, on our cookie sheet, and the final step is just to pop them in the oven and bake for about five to seven minutes, just until that meringue becomes golden brown. Now I will warn you, this is the type of thing you need to stand in front of the oven and watch your meringue, because if you try to multitask and walk away, that meringue can burn pretty quickly. Allow your meringue to cool slightly, and then here's the beautiful thing. You can take that same rack and just pop it in the fridge and let them sit there overnight. That way, when you're done with your delicious lunch on Easter Sunday, your desserts are all ready to go. To serve, you can place them on a cake stand, and what I like to do is actually have a lemon and a little cut from my garden of some lemon leaves to place in the center. I love these little tartlets because they're so beautiful and elegant. They always get lots of oohs and ahs when you bring them to the table, and they are also completely delicious. It's the perfect thing to finish your springtime meal. So if you'd like to host this Easter lunch, here's your game plan. The day before the party, you can make the soup and transfer it to an airtight container and place in the fridge. Make the marinade for the lamb and set your lamb to marinate overnight. Make the mint pesto, cover and refrigerate. Make the tartlets and leave them uncovered and pop in the fridge. The morning of the party, you can remove the lamb, pat it dry, and spread the pesto and tie up your roast. Transfer it to your roasting pan and place the potatoes all around. Cover it with foil until ready to roast. You can also assemble your spice fruit casserole, keep it covered and place in the fridge. An hour before your guests arrive, Assemble your goat cheese appetizer and place it uncovered in the fridge. You can then take it out 10 minutes before guests arrive and arrange your crackers. As soon as all your guests have arrived, pop your lamb in the oven and begin roasting. 15 minutes before your lamb is done, set your soup to warm on the stovetop. When your lamb is done, pull it out of the oven, transfer it to a cutting board, and cover it with foil. Then go ahead and serve your soup, and by the time you are finished, your lamb will be perfectly rested, your potatoes will be done, and your fruit will be nicely warm. Then sit down and enjoy a beautiful Easter lunch, knowing that dessert is ready and waiting in the fridge. Well, there you have it, my go-to Easter Sunday lunch. I hope you guys give this one a try and let me know what you think. And I'll see you back here next month when I'm gonna show you how to pull off an impressive Mother's Day brunch. I'll see you then.